Are you thinking about adding an all-in-one system to your home brewery? Well, stick around. I'm gonna check out my new Anvil Foundry. I'm going to test it on 120 volts and 240 volts and get it ready for my next brew day. Hi, I'm John and welcome back to Just Home Brew. Today, I'm super excited to check out a new addition to my home brewery, the Anvil Foundry All-in-One Electric Brew System. Now, I've had this for over a year. It's taken a backseat to a few of my projects, including my electric herm setup, my glycol system, and my kegerator. But today, I'm going to open it up. I'm gonna check out the components. I'm gonna run a test on 120 volts and 240 volts. I really just wanna see what the system can do before my next brew day. So let's do it. The foundry came really well packaged. Everything fit neatly inside the box. Here's a look at the foundry itself. It stands about 32 inches tall by 20 inches wide. Here's a look inside the foundry. You can see the dip tube and the temperature probe at the bottom. Towards the top of the foundry, you can find the control panel, which controls all the settings of the foundry. At the bottom, there's a standard anvil valve, which was one of the few components that I had to assemble. At the base of the foundry, there's an on-off switch that lights up when it's on and a switch that allows me to switch between 120 and 240 volts. And here's a look at the rest of the components that come with this all-in-one system. There's a grain basket that fits neatly inside the foundry. I installed two hooks on the side of the grain basket that will allow me to drain the mash out of the grain basket. Here's a look at the bottom of the grain basket. I believe I have the older version, which does not allow me to remove the bottom of the basket for cleaning. This is a pretty straightforward immersion chiller. This was the only part of the system I felt could have been improved. I felt the vinyl water feed lines were a little thin and could be of better quality. On to the pump. The pump is a small little pump, but I think it's gonna do the job. It comes with an on off switch and the head of the pump can be removed by unscrewing some wing nuts. Here's a comparison of what this pump looks like next to a chugger pump. As you can see, it's quite a bit smaller. The chugger pump does have a valve. This is one neat part of this system I thought was pretty cool. It has an external valve or clamp that allows you to control the flow of the wart. The silicone tube did have to be cut, so it was just a matter of mocking up where it should be cut. I had a buddy come over and direct me a little bit, but we finally did figure it out, and it just took a couple minutes to attach all the silicone hose. And lastly, here's a disc that sits on top of the grain basket that distributes the recirculated mash water on top of the grain. And now for the 120 volt test. So I filled the anvil foundry up with seven and a half gallons. I set the foundry to boil and the power percentage to 100%. Then we'll start the timer and see how long this takes. So it looks like it takes about two hours and 30 minutes to come up to a boil, and it does have a decent rolling boil with the lid on. I did notice when the lid is off for a period of time, it does go back down to a simmer. I was curious if I moved the foundry indoors, if I could improve the performance of 120 volts. So I ran the same test at seven and a half gallons, and I noticed it took the same amount of time to bring water from 50 degrees up to a boil. I observed the same rolling boil characteristics of the foundry indoors and outdoors. The rolling boil continued until I took the lid off and then reduced to a simmering boil. Now on to the 240 volt test. I decided to create an extension cord that can reach to the edge of my garage. So it consists of a 12-3 wire, nylon sleeves, some 20 amp plugs, and an RV 30 amp to 20 amp adapter. I had some nylon sleeving left over from my electric panel build. I just thought this was a good idea to add some extra durability to the extension cord. Then it was just a matter of attaching the plugs onto the extension cord and getting it ready to plug into the adapter. These plugs are simple twist lock plugs and I thought these were a good idea so the extension cord would have a less likelihood of being unplugged. So here's the finished product and a look at how the 20 amp cord plugs into my 30 amp adapter. 
What I really like about this adapter is the cord is rated for 30 amps and it also has a 20 amp fuse built on the adapter itself. Instead of making a 240 to 120 adapter, I decided to cut the original cord and dedicate a 240 volt surface on the Anvil Foundry. I used the same locking plugs and the plug plugs directly into the extension cord. Now the moment that all Anvil Foundry owners are waiting for, the switch to 240. I then unplugged my 30 amp outlet, plugged in the adapter, connected the anvil, then filled the anvil foundry up with seven and a half gallons of water. Setting the anvil foundry was really easy. I set the setting to boil and then the power level to 100% and then started the timer. At 240 volts, it took around 50 minutes to bring it up to around a mashing temperature. And then as you can see with the lid off, I can achieve a really nice rolling boil. At 240 volts, it took an hour and 20 minutes to achieve full boil from 50 degrees. So just a quick recap of the two tests I ran today. I was really surprised what I could do at 120 volts. It took about two hours and 30 minutes to bring seven and a half gallons from 50 degrees up to a boil, but that's really not a real world brewing situation. I would use less water to bring up to a mash temperature and then from a mash temperature to a boil. I can take advantage of the Anvil Foundry's timer system to bring water up to a mash and I can do other things and it really only took about an hour to bring up to a boil. I feel confident that I could brew at six gallons or even what I intend to use this system for is for smaller batches. At brewing at three gallons, I feel confident that this system would do just fine. Obviously I have the 240 volt option in my garage and that's what I'm going to use for my next brew day. It took about an hour and 20 minutes to go from 50 degrees to a boil. It was super quick and I was really impressed. I'm currently working on a few videos that contain an overview of a kegerator system I built this past year. I'm going to share my 2023 schedule and a subscriber reached out to me and asked if I can go into a little bit more detail on the control panel on my glycol system. So if you haven't done already, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.